Hey everybody, it's Bust with Battles with Bust number 552, and today we'll be doing battle with the Reaper in Backpack Battles. And so we're embarking on this final cycle through each of the classes within Backpack Battles before we try and make our triumphant rise to Masters, and today we will be doing battle with the Reaper. And so let's dive on in, hit that ranked game button, see what turns up. And so, interesting start here. As far as the things like Goobert go, I'm not really impressed with it. Uh, I've really struggled to get through a Goobert comp that actually works, but Goobert is exceptionally strong in the early game, and so this is one of these things that I feel pretty good about taking early, especially as it's on sale. And then, you know, once we get to the midpoint of the game, it's a pretty easy sell. We're going to get the full refund on it, and much kind of like the leather armor, there, there's a lot of early game builds that just cannot fight through uh, this nine heal that happens multiple times per battle. So I think the Goobert's fine. I definitely want the on sale banana. Uh, the, the stone can come in and now we have a sort of real decision, right? <laughs> and do we want to, uh, to pick up the spear? And it's not something I'm really excited about. You know, the uh, the, the Reaper tends to not be a particularly attack focused champion. And then there's not any items that upgrade through the spear except for the holy spear and that's not really a uh, not really a reaper-esque build around and so th this is kind of a rough spot right we don't have an attacky weapon i don't really want to re-roll because when we re-roll we're going to want to pick up the four slot bag and then we're just not going to solve any of the problems that we have right here uh, but as we kind of get into combat we do need stuff activating off of the storage coffin and so uh it's like, what, what's the best thing to hope for? Like a broom, right? We roll and hit a broom or roll and hit a uh, a, a frying pan. The, just attacky items that we'll actually use. I'm half tempted to just take the healing herbs, but it doesn't really solve any of our problems. Like, we are going to go to fatigue and we're going to poison out the opponent, but hmm, I do like the potions within. All right, I'm going to roll it. Fine. Ooh, it wasn't even a wasn't even a particularly good roll, but excuse me, it did hit the pan. That'll do enough for what we're trying to pull off here. <laughs> that was a a long-winded start to get to the the first stage of battle here, but I think it's okay. We could potentially sell the uh, the stone and pick up the on sale walrus tusk. I'm not opposed to having that in the early game, but. To me, the Reaper tends to have a lot of problems with bag space in the early game, and we've done nothing to alleviate that, right? We picked up a 3-hex pan, a 3-hex banana, a 4-hex goobert. Like, trying to find 4 hexes for a wooden buckler is going to be fairly tough to do, and so I don't think we want to chase down that route with the Walrus Tusk. But let's see how this goes. We have tons of sustain. You know, I, I suspect that this battle is really just going to go pretty deep into fatigue uh, and see if we can't just have the goobert fight its way through right we're slowly starting to get those poisons ramped up just a little bit too slow let's see though maybe this next battle will help things out another strong collection of items for us we got a banana we got a a garlic really help pop off with this food start that we're trying to get here and so uh, again fairly awkward in terms of the bag space i i think this might be a place where we just drop the pan out and then look to uh, maybe do something like this to, to where we just get the extra food activation onto the Goobert. The, the pan doesn't really do a ton of damage here in the early game. I, the pan. I, it's all, whenever I see the pan, all I can think about, one of my, my favorite movies of all time is Step Brothers. And once they finally got together and they're out there trying to get a job, they go through the job interview sequence with the tuxedos and like the the lady that they're interviewing with for the janitor's jobs her name's pan uh, pam <laughs> and they're, they're trying their best to, to say pan pan is one of the names that comes up along with pan that's with a d at the end you know it's a soft d but yeah, i love that movie so much we're gonna have to gonna have to crack that into the old the old dvd player here soon <laughs> But all right, here's a broom. I'm fine with this. Like the, the kind of start you typically look for with the Reaper does involve the shovel. That's the uh, the broom plus pan start that gets you in the space of having uh, an economy-based item that spends your stamina, right? That's one of the problems you run into with the uh, the Reaper is right now we are just not using the, the stamina 
uh, resource whatsoever. And that's not good, right? You want to be maximizing all of the resources. Completely ignoring one is not a good thing to do. And so you do find that kind of broom pan start uh, is pretty good with the Reaper. But the downside with this is we're starting to get kind of far along. Right, we're gonna equip both of the items this round, they'll combine for next round, and then it's gonna take it quite a bit of time to actually pay off for those items that have come back. And so I, I think it's fine to still try and push forward with the shovel. It is going to take a fuckload of space out of our bags, right? We're gonna have to find a way to get seven slots of items into the bags right now, but uh, I think it might have a little bit of payoff. The reason I'm going on this tangent is since it is kind of late, I would rather just make either a uh, a wand out of the broom or either a uh, <coughs> get these patch notes out of here or a you know pandemonium or an Excalibur out of the pan. But one of these should turn up a little bit later. We're still kind of in the early game here. All right, so let's roll. We got to find a bag though. Maybe a four slaughter will turn up. Perfect. Glad to see that. And then an interesting space with the. Uh, the cheap leather armor turning up, you know, the, again, the, the problem we run into here is bag space, and I'm kind of on board with the on-sale leather armor. Uh, it's just another one of these early game items that can be extremely challenging to overcome. The, the downside with the leather armor is the only combo with it is the vampiric armor, and the vampiric armor is not something I really like with the, with the Reaper. I don't like going for the vampirism build. I kind of harp over and over and over on given the choice of dealing damage or having sustain, you know, uh, a healing ability, I would rather just be dealing damage. Uh, it just damage always does something to where sustained can uh, either A, get bursted down, right? Your opponent crits you twice in a row and you just die, or you're at max health and it doesn't do anything. And so I, I'm not the hugest fan of going after the vampiric armor. Much in the space of the Goobert, if it turned up right in the early game, I would have snatched it right away. But uh, that's not what happened with it. That's not the way it turned out. So I think we'll end up just letting that go. But all right. So how are we going to manage this bag, though? That's what the 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 big question rolling in is. I want to kind of get the broom set up in here. Maybe we can get the pan set up in here. And if we move everything over, we can get the goobert in the middle. We got a little... A little two food stack to the right, so he's doing something, but then can't stack into the left. Can say do this though. Or we get the the goobert up up a slot, up a hex. We get the the things in that way, but we do need to rotate our food so that we still get the shovel. All right, can't fit the banana in. We'll slap in that stone onto the next round. I think it's starting to come together. We're starting to get. A little bit more going on here. If we're kind of coin flippy in the early rounds, that's where the, the Reaper tends to be weak anyways. And so I think we're starting to recover nicely. We're starting to run out of stamina. Opponent, unfortunately, picked up a hit of thorns. That's a little bit tough for us to, to deal with. Uh, but we're, we're starting to crash through here. Uh, the, the poison was stacking up and the fatigue was starting to hit. They weren't dealing any damage. Felt like that was going to be pretty good. Okay, so how do we move on here? I definitely like picking up things like blueberries and an additional banana. Uh, the, if we take a peek at the, the Reaper items, uh, right? We'll get to those class items. I'm trying to get to the, the subclass choices. Like the Cursed Dagger, I won't build towards unless we have hammers, but you know, I'm happy enough to do that. The things I've been building towards these days are basically the Snake, Mr. Struggles, or the Cauldron. And uh, Mr. Struggles is one that works kind of nicely with mana generation since he is the dark mechanic, right? So we either want to have... Uh, the, the big poison uh, snake thing going on, just a lot of pets and fast attacking. Mr. Struggles goes towards dark things, and then the, the cauldron builds up towards either food or towards uh, mana. But the where this is going is we get, you know, mana usage out of two of those, and the blueberries are always good within food builds. So I think we want to snatch that up. We'll pick up this other banana. Uh, let's take a roll. Definitely want some more bag space. Glad to have that turn up. Uh, and then we can look to pick up another pan. Right, uh, I'm not opposed to uh, going after the Excalibur or going after the Pandemonium. And so uh, those are both on the table. Now, the way that I look at this is I do typically prefer 
uh, the, the pandemonium if we're going towards the cauldron. That just sets you up to where you can uh, get the poison potions going and then have a small food sub-theme sub and then you get the, the extra poisons out of it. And then if we're going towards um, the the more uh, Mr. Mister Struggles <laughs> kind of build, whatever he's called, I, I prefer the Excalibur so we get to make usage out of that mana that we build up. But we'll see how either of those go. I'm going to go ahead and just lock in the pan. I'm a little worried that it'll just disappear forever if we don't take it. And so uh, I want to snatch that one up. But now that we've got a little bit more room in our bag, we can rearrange these uh, these foods to just be a little bit more effective. Maybe something like this. So we'll get... We've got four hexes in the coffin now. That's fine. A three stack within. And we got the, the goobert with another three stack of food to the right. Sure. I like where that's headed. Dude's already got his pandemonium. He's cooking it up quick. It's a pretty expensive early game item and that uh, that crystal costs seven gold. And so if you don't have... Or, you know, it's essentially the entirety of the round. So if you have it turn up, but you're you're lacking in the sense of um, it's not on sale. And it, it's a, a tough pickup, but very, very surprised, or very not surprised that we lost that round. It was quite powerful build at that point. So we do have the hammer turn up. I, I feel like it's a little far along to be chasing after the hammer comp. We're going to be picking up the... Um, the, the dagger shortly, but we haven't, the, the class dagger shortly, but we haven't seen any other daggers. And so I think we'll just let that go. Let's pick up this pan. Let's pick up the, the food. I think we can still take a roll and see if anything interesting turns up. Not really. Okay to sell off this chipped amethyst just to pick up another banana, but we don't really need any more bananas at this point, right? Having, having uh, three bananas is enough. And so... Can we come in and rearrange these bags any better, though? I think that's probably the, the thing that that warrants a little bit of a look. Maybe something like this is a little closer. Gets a, an additional food in the bag, so now we have uh, five hexes inside instead of four. Uh, could maybe get another rotate in there, but I think that's okay. Don't want these other items. All right, next round. Yeah, it's still kind of weak. <laughs> Maybe we should have done it to where we have the blueberries as the one next to the goobert. And kind of tie everything to, together a little bit better. So yeah, I just got crit right at the end. Holy shit, the dude had <laughs> the, the, the dude had 10 thorns stacking in. That's big time. Oh, fuck, and we made the poison goobert? God damn it. I did not want to do that. I, th I think we'll be okay, but this is not what I wanted. I wanted to keep those fly agarics. That, like, especially now, as we just had the on-sale Corrupted Crystal turn up to where we're going to get our Pandemonium, it's kind of shitty to lose out on those items. That was a, a gigantic oversight on my part. Hopefully we can still recover out of this. That's a, just a, a massive pain point from my, uh, my, my lack of paying attention there. But let's see if we can't recover. We'll get the, the pandemonium up and running in here. Uh, let me do that a little better. Maybe if we drop this bag down a hex, get the pandemonium in at the top. I guess the question is, do we want to actually have the goobert in the bag? We, could, we can get goobert up here, maybe in a space like this, to where he's occupying a hex within the bag. Like, I guess that's okay. have to be something like this. I don't think we're going to have the space to pull this off at the moment. Okay. Go back to go back to outside the bag. Yeah, that's that's so savage though getting our uh get, getting our our, po our poison things taken away. I was like, a lot of this build just sucks. <laughs> a lot of this does not feel good. I guess that's okay for here. We could take another roll and see what turns up. 
<sighs> so we've got the chance for more onions. That was brutal. We just got we got savaged off of this dumbass poison goobert. I mean, I guess we can still make it work. We might have to just kind of keep in our heads. Um, to, to I'm trying to think of how we'd even want to pull that off. We can still look to find the the scythe and maybe keep enough bananas to where we can run the pandemonium and the scythe and have the scythe hit the poison goobert and stuff. Ugh, this is just a, this is a mess. I, <laughs> I, I, I'm really regretting how that went down. All right, let's move out of this round. I think we're definitely ahead of this this Reaper though. They're not they're not gonna DPS fast enough. They do have the 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 Fly Agarics in there, but they're just not getting anything done. We're out outdoing them in poison. They're not taking us down fast enough. We do lose out on a lot of heal with that Goobert as well. Okay, so there we go. We got our Pandemonium. Uh, that's just a straight across thing, right? Doesn't have any wings on it. Yeah. We typically want it something like this up here at the top to where uh, it's one hex in the bag, but then it gets to activate on all of these other foods. Let's go ahead and start to arrange that. I'm going to pick up this, uh, this fanny pack. I'm going to pick up the blueberries. It seems like we are probably going to be pushing towards the dark end of the build. Uh, now that we've got our second blueberries and we're getting a lot of food stuff going, but uh, I could still be convinced to uh, to chase down the um, the other thing. All right, we'll pick up the mana orb though, and we got to just stop rolling there. Okay, we come in like this. We get our pandemonium going. Start building out across the top now. Probably just want to put an onion up here. We're we'll, we we're gonna struggle to to maximize the usage of the the, the pandemonium without having a um, without having the bag space to the right of it. That looks decent. We can get back to having the blueberries up here. Uh oh, a lot of activators for the mana thing. Although we don't have any real mana spend now. Okay. All right, I, I, I don't hate it as much as I, I did earlier. <laughs> I still wish we had those Fly Agarics going, but it's not as painful feeling as it, as it was just a minute ago. Those poisons in got him up to 17. That went nicely. And so, all right, yeah, we're going to have to make the big subclass decision now. And so, you know, I, I mentioned going for the the mana-based stuff, and then the mana stuff ties in with the Mr. Struggles. Mr. Struggles is dark, and then the dark abilities work with the, uh, the corrupted armor and the like. And so what you're basically able to do is just build up this big stack of uh, corrupted item or a big stack of dark items all around the armor. Uh, the, the downside to this is... It doesn't really work as well with the Pandemonium, right? As far as that goes, we would have preferred to have uh, probably just sat around and tried to pick up a uh, tried tried to pick up the the Excalibur. The Excalibur to me works a little bit better since when it you hit that mana and then it activates all of your food around it, and you can activate the blueberries and get kind of a nice cycle of things happening with it. But it's probably pretty far away to expect that to kind of come in and happen. And so the, the question that I think we have to ask ourselves is if we do go for the witch, um, do we have enough bag space to make everything work, right? We can, of course, just give up on the pandemonium. We don't have to hang on to that, but... Would we prefer to just move away and then either just pick up the cauldron or uh, even go for the Venomancer? It's just a big full-on poison build. I mean, we do have the uh, the the Pandemonium activating a bunch. We still have this stupid-ass Poison Goobert that I didn't want. We can get just like a little bit of poison stuff going and then still maybe fit in the, the Reaper Blade. Maybe that's the way to go about it. But I'm not really sold on the Alchemist at this point. Um, it does work with food, but we haven't picked up any potions. Like, even uh, just, like, one potion would be kind of interesting. Hmm. 
trying to think of how this could look. We could get, say, like, spacing kind of like this. To where we get the, the two stacks of food up at the top. Both of the stacks hit the pandemonium and the cauldron. Get the, po the, the potions off to the right of it. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm having a, a tough time convincing myself with this. I think I'm just going to go end up going with the witch and then just trying to go into kind of a drain comp like huh. just the the thing with the 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 Mr. Struggles and the and the drain comp is it's it's very expensive, right? We we have to pick up all of the big holy armors and everything, which we haven't seen any of at this point. And then also um it's like we're, we're really just kind of counting on these two blueberries to work, and then we just move away from the pandemonium. Yeah, I think the, the witch is off the table. It's either the, the Venomancer or the Cauldron. We, now, we can still just pick up some of the armors with the Cauldron, right? Because we are going to be out here generating uh, a bunch of mana still, and we can still use the mana items at that point. But I would realistically want to just find a wand, right? Maybe that's where... Okay, okay, this is where I think we're going to, to kind of piece it together. What we're going to look to do is uh we can look to build towards the the staff of unhealing to to get the the damage off of the healing and then we'll just keep all of the food going so we'll still get the heal off of the bananas you can get heal off of pineapples we can then still have usage out of the pandemonium and have double usage out of the cauldron and then maybe we just pick up an armor along the way or something so okay okay uh, it's been it's been decided it's been solved <laughs> we now have a, a a broom turn up which is exactly what we're looking for okay okay i'm i'm getting on board with this there's our staff that looks good let me rearrange this bag just a little bit probably need to just start selling this goobert whenever we can as well uh, keep it in mind that we're not really interested in, in the things that he has to offer. Sorry. I'm sorry, fam. I, I'm sorry to, to talk talk trash about you in that manner, but you're not really what we're after here. So let's see. I, I think I'm fine to pick up the, the health potion. Let's take one more roll, see if we can't turn up a... Um, turn up another bag. That's where things are just a little bit awkward here. I'm gonna... Man, maybe it's just the time to move away from that goobert as well. I was hoping to find another one hex, uh, uh, one hex food, which we can use the the fly agaric for. So okay, so we've got onions up top. We've got our food in here. That looks good. That's good usage from all of these items. Okay, on board with that. Now we need the, the health potion up top. That's going to start upgrading itself. That seems good to me. The thing now, we need to find the space for the broom. Just get you in here. That's fine. Still get some activations out of the coffin. The coffin's not the, the maximum important thing to really be activating now. Of course, we would love to have the eight slots all activating in it, but I think the this looks pretty decent so far. I, I like how that's getting itself coming together. Now we can maybe get, get a little bit better things happening in front of the cauldron once we... Uh, uh, once we get through this round and we get the activation out of the broom. So that's good. Uh, the last thing I'm seeing here is there is a pestilence flask. If we're just going to sell the goobert. Wow, that was that sold for six. That was a, a, a very big value. Wasn't expecting it to be that big. All right, so let's take the damages in that order. Okay, okay, this is this is coming together. It took me a, it took me a hot minute to figure it out, but I, I think we're getting to a reasonable looking build here agree or disagree <laughs> all right so what do we got here very heal heavy goobert comp out of the out of the the berserker i think we're okay i think he's gonna struggle to to deal enough damage before the poison ramps up 
Okay. Fighting on through, trudging on along. Feeling good, feeling good. So I definitely want these leather bags. Need that upgrade space now. Uh, I'm not opposed to things like the pineapple. Like, it's not my favorite food in the game. It's very uh, sizable and that it takes up a lot of room in your bag. But it does work kind of nicely in these comps if we're just going to be building up to the Staff of Unhealing. Uh, since it does also heal, it does also add those thorns in. I just prefer it to be on sale. Like, 7 is a pretty... A hefty price point to be paying for uh, paying for the food so I'm kind of okay with just letting it go let's see if we can't get a, a little bit better bag situation happening here maybe that th doesn't look as bad in a spacing kind of like this Where do we stand now? Got maximum hexes on the cauldron. We still got our max hexes on the pandemonium. I think this is okay. I think decent, decent wrap on the pineapple. All right. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Interesting. The this reaper doesn't seem too far along. There's still dabbling around with the double shovel trying to do stuff with the cursed dagger they did stack up on poison pretty quick through their potions but we haven't activated any of ours all right all right coming together coming together and good we've got the demonic flask that's what you make the staff of unhealing with it is a bit unfortunate in the sense that it's so expensive right we've been a little bit worried about the money in this game but let's see what we can do roll out of that now here is what i thought was going to be interesting with this and then do we want to pick up the death scythe because the the thing to watch out for is the uh the staff of unhealing does take stamina right it's a 1.5 stamina cost and so it is an actual usage of it but we're at low right now right we're we're not draining down our mana and this the death scythe isn't a huge factor uh right what is that 1.1 per second what would that get us up to two per second but we've got three bananas it's just the the thing we would be looking to do with it is uh is stack it up here around the pandemonium so essentially the pandemonium does double uh, on every activation uh, the the downside to it is we uh, uh you, you don't get like the pestilence flasks in with it i'm not hmm That's tough. That's tough. I think at the end of the day, it's probably just too expensive uh, in terms of stamina and just in real price as well. All right, let's get our Staff of Unhealing. I'm on board with it. Picked up the Pocket Sand. I always prefer these Pocket Sands to the stones, and so they're all free to sell. But the, the Pocket Sand is just a little bit better to me. All right, looking good. Battle on. <laughs> Got the cheeses, the cheese comp along with the, the, the mana blade out of the Berserker. I think stacking up poison, the poison typically outstacks the, uh, the the health he gets out of the cheese. And he doesn't have his Excalibur yet, and so this comp wasn't fully together. All right, good stuff, good stuff. So here we go, we've got our Staff of Unhealing that's going to be uh, quite strong in here. Again, you get to... Uh, Every two seconds you heal for 16, but the big point with this is you use six mana, and then for six seconds your healing also deals damage. So the healing from the staff does damage, the healing from the bananas does damage, the healing from the pineapple does damage, and the big one, if you can hit it right, is the healing from the potions does damage. And so uh, we'll see how that comes together, see if that works out for us today. Uh, otherwise, I can see towards building, building towards like holy armor type things a little bit, uh, you know, there's a, a limit to how much food you can really get going on here. Like, if we look at our comp, we can kind of safely just push everything to the right here. And now we do have this kind of, like, you know, two hex band around the left to where there's not a lot to put in. We would kind of prefer our uh, our foods to look something uh, like this, right? So we have this banana down here, but the banana is one hex in 
the coffin and then two hexes out. And so with even looking at it like that, we do still have this nice kind of six hex space up at the top to where we could uh, deploy an armor. And so I think that is something that we need to, to add in. The, the question would be, what armor do you want to go for? Uh, I don't think we want the, uh, the, the corrupted armor. The big one would just be the moon armor. Uh, the, the continually reflecting debuffs. I don't think we're going to have magic items. Is this the, the pandemonium? I guess that's where it gets interesting, right? The pandemonium is dark. The staff of unhealing is dark. If you pick up vampiric potions, they count as dark. And so we, we can get a couple of activations out of uh, the corrupted armor. Uh, and that uh, helps the debuffs not die <laughs> as we put the poisons onto our opponent. And so maybe that's maybe that's worth building towards here i could because i could even see us you know it, it's not super important to have the the staff of unhealing in the bag we could end up just pushing it up here at the top and then get some small activations out of the uh the staff of unhealing and out of the pandemonium and then if we add in a um the helmet that would work as well so i think i'm convinced that's enough we do need to figure out how to get this in here though i we're gonna we're gonna struggle to have the space to do all of this nonsense is the the problem we have i think it it might just be off the table of getting the holy armor in this turn and so let's let's not not work too hard on that right i, I don't think we're gonna rearrange anything enough to to actually get that holy armor on board So let's make sure the core of our, our build here isn't messed up. Let's add these stones in. Okay. So yeah, not not the not super ideal in terms of mana spend for the turn, but I, I think I like where we're going, picking that armor up. Alright, easy round. That pyromancer didn't have too much going on. And so yeah, so now we need to find some some bags, right? So we'll take the the protective purse. I'm not opposed to adding in demonic potions. These are, you know, reasonable damage sources, but I don't want to reserve it, and I'd prefer to find it on sale. And so we'll move on from it. Fly a gark is kind of fine. We'll make that work with what we have, but we need to focus in more on bags. So here's a five slot. We picked up. Uh, if we picked up four slots on the turn, we should be able to get this um, th this holy armor on board now. Let me just clear a bit of space down here. I am fine to have the holy armor within the fanny packs. It, uh, it has the uh, cleanse poison kind of thing, and then it, it switches to cleansing debuffs, and so it's not unreasonable having it in that spot, but think we probably want the um, uh, let's see I'm gonna say I think we probably want these four hex bags over this way this is going to be one of these complete nonsense rounds where I just <laughs> I, I completely mess up everything within our bags Trying to think, because I I, I want to get this. Like this is the way I want this to be, so that we can put the staff up here at the top, and then at the end of the day we are going to want uh, the holy armor up here in this space. And so having it on the. Are you fucking kidding me? Hang on. I, I know that I can fix this. I accidentally sold the holy armor. I, I just have to stop and reset the game at this point, I think. Alright, let's see. <laughs> okay. We we've still got our we've still got our holy armor in the bag. And so Yeah, that was gonna be brutal. That was gonna be brutal. And so at least know what we're looking for the bags to look like a, a little bit more now. It's supposed to be something like this, and then we can get uh the holy armor at the top. Get the the thing up here. Okay, okay. So that looks a little bit better, a little a little bit safer here now. And so, uh, before we mess anything else up, let's sell this stone, grab the blueberries up from the top, 
I, I like how that stands and now we're starting to look pretty decent and so uh, we should be able to rearrange these blueberries to work a little bit better uh, with all of our bags this pineapple is not going to fit anywhere particularly well All right, something like that. That's a, that's a looking a little bit better. We've got a little bit to build towards. Our cauldron is fully activated. Our pandemonium is fully activated. We're up to one, two, three, four, five, six hexes within the the coffin thing, looking good. And then again, we're gonna look to um, turn this holy armor into the dark armor if we can. We got a little bit of space underneath to put a uh, a corrupted helmet if that turns up. I like how this is coming together. We're looking good. It's so frustrating though when you when you sell like that. I wish that there was an undo. Maybe there is an undo. This game didn't really come with a a very strong instruction manual. <laughs> and so excuse me, maybe there is a way to actually undo a sell like that. Uh, but it's a it's a it's a real frustrating pain point when you're trying to move stuff from your backpack into your bag and you accidentally sell it <laughs> and so we we made it through there it wasn't that big of a problem today but it is a it is a bit of a pain point and an annoyance but all right let's do this i'm gonna pick up the fly agaric i don't really want onions onions are basically just a bag filler at this point right we're okay with the bananas and the pineapples giving us heal, the blueberries are the good filler kind of thing. They only take one hex and stuff, and then the fly agaric is kind of our bread and butter um, food at this point. And so that looks good. Skip on it. The divine potion's a little expensive. There we go. There's the corrupted crystal for our big armor. That looks good. Two, the, the single bag looks fine as well. This is an easy enough upgrade, just putting the fly agaric out to the right. Guess we could probably do something like this, though, if we want to get a little bit more usage out of the bag. Now we're up to seven hexes taken, and we could put the banana up here. The banana doesn't get super activations or anything, but fits in that spot. Okay. What do we got here? Reaper. Doing things with the Mana Blade. I know the Mana Blade did recently get nerfed. And so... Uh, these comps may not be as strong as they were in the past week. It seems like this game's been delivering patches on about a weekly cadence. I'm not certain if that's because... Uh, they're getting primed and ready for their full release, or if that's just what they intend on holding, but it feels like a, a very fast patch cadence, and so I, I'm curious if they hold that up after release, or you know, if they're just kind of getting ready uh, for release and wanting to get it in, in their balance spot before it comes out. All right, though, looking good here. Do we ever want the cr the glowing crown? Like becoming invulnerable isn't horrible, uh, and instead of getting that uh, that helmet that we were talking about, we can just end up putting the glowing crown down here, and it's a, it's a holy item, right? The, the 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 armor activates off of holy, and so we could technically even do something like this to where we stack the two. Uh, two hex items underneath it and get something there. I think I'm kind of on board with it. I haven't been watching our mana enough to notice if we're running out of mana. Like, I don't want to outdo our mana for the Staff of Unhealing. I want our healing to be dealing damage every single time, but I haven't been watching that super closely, and so hopefully we don't get punished for that. Otherwise, other bag, something we definitely need. Let's bring these bananas back down to the bottom. Get this a little bit more effective up here at the top. Kind of lacking in potions at this point as far as what has turned up. Let's see what happens. Oh, we might need to put this. We're going to put this crown underneath the corrupted armor. We might have to move that again. That's okay. Let's take a roll, see what turns up. And so, yeah, we don't want the lightsaber. It's going to just be too expensive in terms of stamina. So we'll let that go. We'll take one more roll. Have the fanny pack turn up. Okay. 
Is there a way to make this work up top? Hang on. It's like I have in my head that we should be able to get more uh, get get more of these activations on the uh, the corrupted armor, but I think this is fine. So what do we think out here? Gonna want this poison potion. We only got two hexes left. Is there anything to move? I think this is it. I think this is gonna be good. We'll put the we'll put the stone in. We'll put the the dust in into battle. Oof. What do we got? Up against the dragon comp. Two frost drakes, two poison drakes. You got that quick hit of... The, the, the quick hit of poison in, but we're starting to outdo him pretty quick. Let's see here. Ooh. Barely got him. I saw the, the big bursts come in right at the end. Good stuff. So, okay. Take the poison potion. What else do we got? A demonic flask on the cheap. Sounds good to me. We can still afford the protective purse. Right, so let's get these things up and running. So I, I think something like this. I typically like the demonic, f the the health potion to be drinking the demonic flask so it'll be down here at the bottom right you don't want the demonic flask to pop right at the beginning so you consume this and deal 0.35 damage to your opponent for each debuff and so if this activates right at the very initial point of the battle it doesn't do anything because your opponent doesn't have any debuffs yet and so i typically like the demonic f the the health potion to drink into the demonic flask since you typically are you know later on in the battle before that activates but uh, i do want it to convert so we'll have that lined up at the top just to make sure it has the 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 chance to do its thing before we get uh, before we get into battle. Now what do we got left? We just got two hexes. Okay, slap these foods in. Uh, uh, would we? I'd say I kind of prefer to just have the banana in, but I think this is okay. Is this a chain chain comp out of the We do have a fair amount of buffs coming in. The cauldron kind of ensures that we'll have them. But he's gonna be fairly slow. Doesn't seem like he's able to to, to overcome our poisons. We up to up in the sixties. Seventy-six. Hitting them big. Got him. Okay. What do we got now? Another, uh, another corrupted crystal. I'm interested in this. I would like to have the the helmet if that kind of thing wants to turn up. And so, I guess we'll just go ahead and snatch it. Got a easy bag. Nothing too interesting here. Four hex bag and a potion. Cool. I'm on board with all of that stuff. And so, let's do this. Got to get some kind of activations out of these these foods out here. That's kind of our, our flex space over to the left, if you will. Uh, I think that's a reasonable look. I'll put the corrupted thing into something. Goes well into the armors at this point. I'm going to keep the health potion. That looks good. Move our demonic flask to the bottom. That looks good as well. I think it's just tough to see on here. Our our demonic flask is in the correct uh, space or the correct orientation. It's just very tough to see that green line up at the top of it. Okay, so it's uh, stop to pause to see if we had space. Oh, we should put the dust in for the stone, but this is what it is. Oh, it's barely. Barely dropped him short of the uh, the the upgrades to the mega clover. 
seems like we're still struggling to win this round, but <laughs> we got big poison stacks if we can make it a little bit further. Oof. Oof. Okay, okay. So let's see, you got a Corrupted Crystal, definitely take that thing on sale, bring in the Health Potion. Now it is interesting with the Shield of Valor, if this is something that we would want to add in. Uh, we, we can still make things work in terms of moving the uh, moving the, the Corrupted Armor. Maybe it's okay, right? I mean, we have a lot of space out here, it just buys us so much time. Got to sell quite a bit to get it on board, though. And so what we'll end up looking to do is, say, bring the corrupted armor down one, put the shield over here down at the bottom, and then we can still fit the crown up at the top. So I think that'll look fine once we get there. Uh, do want to get this health potion in and upgrading. I think we'll just end up moving all of our bags down, or all of our potions down one at this point. Okay, that looks decent. And then we could still just reserve and roll. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I hate just letting that value go past, but it is it is something we have potential to do here. How does that work out? Seems reasonable. Gets us up to the full eight hexes of usage down in the bottom bag. We're gonna lose out on this. We'll have to rearrange next turn when the uh, when, when the shield of valor comes in. But I think this is okay. All right, battle. We're getting there. What is this? Now this one has me curious. Got the a big sustain out of the cheese comp, right? He's got the triple cheese with the Excalibur, and then has the claws of attack to get stacking attack speed. He doesn't have the thorns to, to build up the the speed on the claws, though. Let's see if that poison can outscale the cheeses. Not today. Not today. Be, that that kind of battle will be much better once we once we pull in the Shield of Valor, though. We're getting getting kind of close to the end time, so I'm not certain how much that's gonna gonna be relevant. Let's see, we're gonna get our armor in. Good with that. Now the, the Shield of Valor, it's fairly minimal in the sense that it can, um, oh man, hang on, this stack doesn't get the Staff of Unhealing in? That's fucking annoying. I don't think we're gonna we're going to be rearranging all of our, our stuff at this point, is what it is. Uh, I lost my train of thought. I was, I was wanting to check and make sure all of our our stuff was in the Corrupted Armor, but... Anywho, I was going to say that the Shield of Valor does work on onions, and so an onion typically gives three on an activation. That The, the Shield of Valor increases by 30%, but this still rolls up, or rounds up, I should say. So it is a pretty big thing making this go the garlic go from three armor to four armor if it has a Shield of Valor on it, but I don't think that's something we're really going to be striving for here. Let's see. Here's the the big thing is can we get all of these potion stacks to, to work right? Got to get a... <laughs> <laughs> gotta gotta get a pretty big rearrange for this to, to try and fit in. We're gonna do that. I, I don't know. We're, we're short on the bags. Let's just take a roll and see if a bag turns up. No. Another, another potion belt turns up. That technically works. We'll have this here, this here. Sell the stone, get the potion belt, put that in the middle. And we just have two hexes of space left up at the top. Okay. I'm leaning towards something like this. We can maybe get a little bit more usage out of these potion things uh, up here, but I, I don't think that's really worth chasing after. We like how this looks now. Seems reasonable. 
Get the banana stacks going up, sure. Not quite getting max usage out of all of these hexes at the bottom, but I think that's okay. What do we got in here? One, two, three, four, five, six of eight. Sure, that seems reasonable. Now, we can fix our potions in this way. Get this extra banana in. I don't think we're gonna gonna work too hard to get the the, the hexes going on it. And now I guess we could look to reserve the, the pineapple. We'll have exactly three hexes left after this point, and we can probably just make that work out. And so I think this is okay. Let's dive on in. Just have to shift like all of our potions up and we might be able to, to make this work. What do we got here? The egg scalibur coming out of the, the pyromancer. Seems like our poison's scaling way faster than their their flames are. Got him. Okay, was that it? We had no more battles left? I thought we had one more round. And so, not bad, not bad. I guess that, that turned out well, right? We got fairly decently far along into the survival rounds. We picked up a good amount of MMR, uh, and I feel like that was a, a reasonable kind of pivot to how the builds went. Now, you know, our early game didn't quite go how we wanted it to, but I think we started to make kind of the... Uh, the 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 vision that we needed uh, into where the comp was going to go right again I like to always build around the subclass items I, I think that's one of the key things to just keep in mind as you're trying to get the builds together and that's where we were starting to get in the early game right we're like okay well we didn't get the kind of shovel start that we wanted to that's unfortunate but uh, we are able to kind of build towards this this goobert for a little while and then we can also build towards um uh, the, the blueberries. And I think to me, the blueberries were the real kind of pivot point for how we were going to go with this. It's like, okay, so we have no hammers. We're not doing a a, uh, a knife build. We don't really have um, any of the things that build towards the, the pet thing. And I don't like to build towards the vampire thing. And so it really just says, okay, do you want to do the cauldron or do you want to do the witch or do you want to do the, the pet? And uh, the the I think the witch we kind of correctly moved or the 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 uh, the dark thing we kind of correctly moved away from. You can kind of see some of the elements that would have appeared within that dark build here, to where we did get the the holy corrupted armor and started to wrap it within those uh, dark items that we actually have. But uh, I think that with our like blueberries and our Excalibur being the big thing, or we didn't have Excalibur, we had the the pandemonium. Uh, I think the pandemonium is what really defined. Uh, what was coming together out of this comp. And so I think we made the right choice in there and the, the way to take it, taking the cauldron along with the pandemonium, really trying to use the foods that we have and not relying on anything in particular to turn up. And so I think that was good. I think we also ran into the big goobert bait within this battle, right? We picked up the goobert. We planned on selling it early. We made a little bit of a whoopsies turning our goobert into the poison goobert, which we did not want to do. Uh, and we didn't let that really uh, define the comp, right? We didn't try and pick up the, the, the reptile thing because we got stuck with the goobert as a pet and tried to have some kind of weird bad pet comp. We just said, okay, this is fine to sell. Uh, let's move this towards the real build around element here in the pandemonium and let's make that work. Uh, the interesting thing with that Goobert was is it did sell for six, right? If you remember, well, that may not even be a good deal, right? <laughs> I was going to say we, we sold the poison Goobert for six. We paid three for it, sold it for six. That feels like a good upgrade, but it had two fly agarics within it. And so at the end of the day, we spent seven on it, sold it for six. I guess that's not the worst deal in the world, but I, I thought it was worth noting. I thought we were getting such a good deal on that sell, but once we calculated in the fly agarics, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't as good as I thought. But nonetheless, good stuff. Fun run with the Reaper. I had a good time with that. I hope you did too, because that is going to do it for us today. So if everyone enjoyed the video, hope you learned a thing or two along the way. You had a good time watching. This is Bustin' Lee. Thank you for being here.